Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering Stuff. And in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about topic defect in timber. So the defect in timber can basically be characterized into five different categories uh, based upon the mode of the defects. So we have defect due to conversion, defect due to fungus, defect due to insect, defect due to natural forces and defect due to seasoning. And in today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about the defect due to conversion, defect due to fungus and defect due to insect. Defect due to natural forces and seasoning we will discuss in the upcoming lectures. Okay. So let's start with the first category that is defect due to conversion. So this category of defect is when we uh, mishandle the equipment that is used for the timber processing. All right. So uh, in this, the first type of defect is the chip mark. Right. So chip mark is a, a defect that is caused when we uh, mishandle the equipment and we uh, when we intend to place some mark or sign. But because of the mishandling of the equipment, the surface of the timber get destroyed, right? So suppose uh, this is a timber surface and we want to place some uh, marking like these, right? But we mishandle the equipment and the surface of the timber get burned or uh, get defected. So when this type of defect happens, this is called as chip mark. Then we have diagonal grain. This type of defect is formed due to improper sewing of timber. So basically in this what happens is that the timber has to be sewn in certain pattern. Okay. And uh, this is like the intended output after the uh, sewing of the timber. But again, maybe because of the mishandling of the timber or uh, defect in the equipment or like the blade is not that much sharp. What happens is that instead of clean cut, we have some rough cuts or uh, because of which the crack propagation happens. And when this happens, uh, timber is, be is basically become useless for any use. So this type of defect is called as diagonal grain. So diagonal grain is, is the type of defect that is caused due to improper sewing of timber. Then we have the torn grain and uh, torn grain is the defect when when a small depression is formed due to falling of the tool or any equipment on the timber surface so basically uh, like this we have a, a very good timber surface but maybe because of the dragging of the equipment over the surface or falling of, of the equipment over the surface of the timber certain markings are left which basically make the timber useless all right so when this type of defect happens, this kind of defect comes under the category of torn grain. Next we have the vein defect. So this type of defect is denoted by the presence of original round surface on the manufactured piece of timber. Okay. So basically what happens is that instead of uh, having a very crisp, very precise, uh, well sewn edges because of mishandling of the equipment or defect in the equipment, the round surface is obtained on the timber or manufactured timber like this. This should be extremely uh, like straight edges, but maybe the saw is not that much sharp or the timber has not been placed at the designated place or the equipment was uh, malfunctioning because of which this kind of rounded edges is obtained. So the timber is basically is not cannot be used for the intended purposes right so when this type of defect happens this type of defect is called as vein okay so we have the chip mark we have diamond growing torn gain and vein which is the category of defect due to conversion all right now moving to the second category that is defect due to fungus so uh, Needless to say, this kind of defect will happen when uh, the timber is attacked by fungus. Okay, so for fungus to affect the timber, there are certain two. Uh, there are two conditions 
that need to be satisfied the first condition is that the moisture condition or the moisture content of the timber should be above 20% okay and the place where the timber is stored must have sufficient amount of air circulation and warmth so once these two condition are satisfied the wood becomes susceptible for the fungus attack okay now depending upon the part of the wood the uh, fungus attacks we have many kind of defects so in this the first one is the blue stain so blue stain is when the fungus attack the sap of the wood and basically turns the sap of the wood into bluish color okay so when this happens such kind of defect is called as blue stain okay so here we can see uh, the image of a wood that is being affected by the blue stain defect okay so this is your blue stain defect then we have the brown rot and brown rot is when the fungus attack the cellulose compound of the wood right when they attack the cellulose compound of the wood and by attacking the cellulose compound they rottens the wood so this kind of defect is called as the brown rot so this is the example of brown rot where the fungus has attacked the cellulose compound basically made the wood weak and unuseful for desired purposes then we have dry rot and basically dry rot occurs when the timber is stored in a area in a surrounding that has good amount of moisture but there is no free circulation of air and the wood that is stored is unseasoned wood okay so because of this unseasoned wood and having no free circulation of air in that condition the wood that is stored in such condition starts to rot and becomes unfit for the use okay so it like the wood becomes unfit for the use and this kind of defect is called as the dry rot next we have the heart rot and heart rot is the uh, is the fungal disease when the fungus attack the center of the wood okay so when the fungus attacks the center of the wood trunk or the branches this defect is called as the heart rot so here we can see that the fungus has attacked the center of the wood this piece of wood has become unfit for any injuring purpose or for any manufacturing purposes right so this is called as the heart rot then we have the sap stain and basically in sap stain what happens is complete decay of timber does not take place right and the fungus attack the sap of the wood and because of uh, that attack of the sap of the wood the sap starts to lose its color okay so again because of this the timber is unfit for any intended purposes so again here we can see that the timber has attacked the sap of the wood making it like totally unfit for any purpose next we have the wet rod so basically in the wet rod uh, chemical decomposition of the wood takes place and this happens when the timber is stored in a place which is subjected to alternate wet and dry conditions okay so when the wood is subjected to alternate wet and dry conditions so chemical decomposition of the wood takes place and complete rotting of the wood takes place right so uh, this is identified having the blackish or grayish color over the timber right and this timber becomes weak and unfit for any use so this kind of defect is called as the wet rot next we have the white rot and in the white rot what happens is the fungus attack the lignin of the wood okay so when they attack the lignin of the wood it turns the lignin into pale and basically makes the overall timber unfit for any engineering purposes so when the fungus attack the lignin of the wood turns the lignin into a very pale whitish color and thus this is called as the white rot so one thing that you should always remember is what in in fungus attack in exact defect what kind of fungus attack the which part of the 
wood right so in the blue stain sap of the wood is being attacked by the fungus in the uh, brown rot the cellulose compound of the wood is being attacked right and uh, in your heart rot basically the central part of the wood is being attacked likewise in your sap stain what happens is the sap of the wood is being attacked then we have the uh, this white rot in which the lignin of the wood is being attacked okay it's a very important thing to remember next we have the uh, defect due to insect and in this uh, basically what happens is the timber is being attacked by the variety of insect and uh, these insect either feed on the uh, timber or they use the timber for the sheltering purposes or it can be both so when this happens this comes under the category defect due to insect okay so the first insect that affects the timber is beetles so beetles what they do is they form pin holes of size 2 mm diameter and they attack the sap of the wood okay and they start eating the sap of the wood and in turn produce a fine flour like powder right and with this the timber from the outside may look perfectly fine but from the inside it starts to get damage right so uh, around 2 mm mm diameter of the holes are being created by the beetles and from the outside the timber surface so what may look perfectly fine but from the inside it's completely destroyed they uh, these beetles destroy the sap of the timber or sap of the wood and completely destroys the wood from the inside thus making unfit for any use next we have the marine bores and marine bores are generally found near the salty water and uh, they do not use the timber for their uh, survival right they do not feed on the timber but they drill holes and use it for the shelter purposes all right so the diameter and the length of of holes that these marine bores can drill varies from 25 mm and 60 mm respectively that is 25 mm diameter and 60 mm in length and conventionally uh, no timber is perfectly immune from the attack of marine bores so this is an example uh, of a timber that is being attacked by the marine bores so we can see here that uh, the marine bores drill hole of diameter 25 mm and length 60 mm and this basically use this for the shelter purpose and you can see the extent to which these marine bores can decay the overall timber surface okay that the timber becomes unfit for any use then we have uh, termites that uh, destroys the timber okay so these termites are called as the white ants and basically they live in the colony and once a wood is attacked by termites they feed very fast right they destroy the timber in a very very fast pace conventionally uh, teal and sal are the uh, few varieties of uh, timber that are resistant towards the attack of termites okay so a wood that is being attacked by termites looks something like this so they again destroys the overall wood surface right from outside as well as from the inside okay so this is your uh, attack from the termites all right so this is all for this video uh, if you feel that the video was useful uh, to you make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel for uh, more videos like this and do press the bell icon for regular notification from the next lecture we are going to start with the defect due to natural forces and defect due to seasoning okay if you have any doubt you can always ask in the comment section thank you